Olá amigos, hoje vamos entrevistar um dos melhores coaches do mundo, apelidado pelo Peter Ebdo como WCC, World Champion Coach, no qual ele treinou o próprio Peter Ebdo quando foi campeão mundial, Steve Hendry, sete vezes campeão mundial, Shaw Murphy e o Mark Selvi. Apresenta a vocês, Chris Henry. Chris, uh, the best coach in the world, one of the best coach in the world, yeah. Nickname WCC? <laughs> yeah, who gave you this, this nickname for you? Peter Ebdon, yeah? WCC, that was Peter Ebdon, yeah, back in 2002. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. Well, why you become a coach, my friend? Um, it's a good question, Igor. Uh, there's, there's a few reasons for that. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I was coached by a man called Frank Callum. And at that time, Frank Callum was the coach of Steve Davis and John Parrott. And I liked the way Frank was coaching snooker. He was uh, coaching snooker in a what they believe now was a bit of a non-traditional way. It was a, a unique way to teach. Um, and I never forgot my lessons with Frank. My, I, I suppose my problem when I was younger my, um, was that I was very good at football. I was very good at tennis. I was very good at snooker. And I could never really choose between the two or three different things that I wanted to do. And I think in sport, if you want to be a professional sports person, you have to make a decision and pick one direction and go for it. So as a player, you have to be very committed, like Igor Figueiredo is. <laughs> yeah. So coaching, um, one, one situation happened, uh, Igor, for me. I was playing in, in a a televised snooker final in Holland in the Dutch Open against a player called Nicky Lazarus. And the tournament was played non-televised. But when the final came, when it was the final, it was on television. And I found it very difficult to deal with my nerves, with the anxiety. I was very nervous in the first couple of frames because it was television. And so I was going from playing very, very good snooker in the quarterfinals and semifinals. And then when I got to the final, it was like I was freezing because of the pressure, the nerves. And the psychology of that, I wanted to understand why was that happening? Why was I so nervous in the, in the first one or two frames because I was playing now on television. And I think from that experience, that made me want to really understand more about what's happening inside here and how we can help people develop a better mindset and deal with pressure situations in a better way. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it is a good point. This is a good point. What important one mental coach for every sport players or especially for snooker players? Okay, well, snooker and golf are both what we call dead ball sports. So the ball is not moving. It's always still. Yes. And that means, that means you have much time to think about the situation. But the problem is, if you think too much about the situation, then your performance level goes down. Mm -hmm. So it's better not to think too much. So my job as a mental coach, the first two things we look at 
Igor, is self-belief. Yeah. And effective habits, beliefs and habits. Yes, good rabbits there. Uh, good, good habits, because it's a little bit like when you drive your car now. In the beginning, you had to learn how to drive. Yeah. And it, it was quite difficult. But now you can drive your car for, let's say, one hour to somewhere. And you don't even remember how you was driving. You did it automatic. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. Yeah, about uh, you change the bad rabbits or addiction to a new software. Right. So what, we, what I've done over the last about eight years now, I've been very much studying neuroscience. Mm, nice, this nice. Science, this is the science of how your brain works. Why does a player start to feel nervous, stressed, anxious, fearful? Yeah. When those, when those emotions start to happen, a player's level can go from here very quickly down because of their emotional state, how they feel about the situation. Yeah. So now we know there are ways to help a player to rewire their brain to deal with those things in a much calmer, more relaxed way. Mm, yes, very good, very good. Do you think, what do you think it is, it's important to work the mental side of the game, yeah? Do you think this is very, very important, yeah? Uh, yeah. Because someone, especially amateurs or beginners, think it's not very, very important to just play snooker or about technique or something like that. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. So there are two, two very important things, Igor. In English, we have a word called competence. And that means having the ability to physically be able to do something very well. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's what we call competence. But then we have confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a confident person, you will be able to perform at your best. And yes. play more natural possible also. And play more natural without thinking about it. Because you need to be on autopilot. You need to be playing by habit. What we call mm. in sports psychology, playing in the zone. And basically what that means is the habit that you've created through all that repetition, practice... Basically, what you're doing is making a little piece of brain software, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, we, we know in neuroscience, you need to be in what's called alpha brainwave state, which means you need to be calm and relaxed to allow this software to control your body in a very, very effective way. Oh, nice, nice. That is Sorry. why the, that, that is why the mental side, Igor, is so important. I think the fans there have this question. I know, but how important is one coach for one player? To have one coach for one player. Yeah, how important for for, for a player one... for a player to have a coach? Yeah. Well, I think I think everybody's different, and I think players go through different stages of their career yeah when when everything is fantastic when you're having fantastic results and you've never had a coach before you never have nothing you don't need then, nothing <laughs> why why do you need a coach why do you need a coach yeah of course of course the problem is when things start to go wrong <laughs> and your performance levels start to go lower you start looking for what's wrong now. Yeah. I think the so big that's, key, yeah. That's then the time when a snooker player usually, when a snooker player will look for somebody to help. Yeah, yeah. For you... But if, you look, if, you look, Igor, if you look, Igor, in other sports like football, like tennis, these guys have full-time coaches all the time. Yeah. And I think it's very good provided that the coach knows what they're doing, because maybe not all coaches are giving the right information 
to the individual. Everybody's different. Yeah, of course, of course. There's different. Yeah, yeah, of course. I know, Everybody's I mean, uh, some players also is have very good results, but still, no, never, never have the best, maybe possible best, best, best results, but don't know yeah. what's going on. I think the, the the big key, the attitude or something like that on well, the match is the coach, I think, help, yeah. If you want me to give you a little bit of technical information, I won't go too deep, but basically your brain has a very, very similar mechanism. Like in your house, if you want the temperature to go higher in your, your central heating, you need to turn the thermostat. Yeah, higher. yeah, to control, yeah. Now, yeah. in our brain, we have something called a psycho-cybernetic mechanism. It's just the same as your thermostat in the room in your house. We have a performance thermostat. And if we start if we start to perform to the level that we are set to perform at, we start to get very nervous because the brain doesn't recognize the situation. Yeah. I know what I mean. <laughs> well, and it's like everybody. So what you have to do, you have to turn the thermostat, performance thermostat, higher before you try to achieve your goal. Yeah, but this only some players or players have give have supporting because someone you know on the match has gone. But when you have one coaching, similar you help. Similar you help me in Hyderabad, remember? Yeah. Yes. And I have good sources or someone's also begin be, between the game, go toilet, you know the, the statical. And you give yeah. it little information, oh, you control your emotion, your head's gone, no, yeah, working more your tactical or calm or this or this. It's a big difference because yeah. you know, in snooker plays in three five minutes, your head's gone, you yeah. you lost the match. That's right. And when, yeah. when, when, when you say your head's gone, what, what that means, Igor, is that your emotional state has yeah. become very negative, yeah, negative. Your, Lost the concentration. Where yeah. uh, this mix, and you lose completely you gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you're, you're starting to sound like all the British boys. Completely gone, heads gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Younger players have a lot these. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you hear it. You hear this all the time. Yeah, and yeah. Here's the interesting thing, Igor. The biggest thing that helps you to perform at your best. Is your emotional state how you feel? Yeah. If you feel relaxed, confident, calm, enjoying yourself, now you're going to play great snooker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. Your your confidence is up. Very but good. But the thing with yeah. that, the thing is, Igor, there's two parts of our brain. There's a conscious part of our brain, and there's a subconscious part of our brain. Yeah. And the subconscious which most people don't understand, is doing about 97% of all the work. And you like the comfortable zone. Right. It controls your emotions. It controls how you feel. So you have to program it like a computer in the right way, in preparation, so that when you get into these match situations, you still feel fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I learned it easy if you... Yeah, and when you when you talked about uh, the, the world amateur final, which is what you mentioned, yeah, I think the biggest reason you 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 did well there was when you came to Bruges, you told me that you changed your eyes. Yeah, you remain good memory, yeah. Right, <laughs> you said somebody told me when I hit the cue ball with my cue, I need to look at the object, object ball. ball. Yeah, but that was not your natural style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You tell me, you tell me to to stop for three days, because I have a new program, new software. Yeah. I yeah. confuse in my mind. You tell yes. me stop to three days after you come back natural again. You will. You go back to your old habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's another important thing about snooker is that 
you know, when you start talking to players about which ball they should look at, that that should be natural. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember. I have this. You called to me together, friends, Itaro and Danilo, Zico. Yeah. Uh, I think the best time in my life. After you change me, my bridge a little, my grip, I come back my natural eyes. Yes. And after you teach me about the brief for relax also, and yes. you give me some word for control my 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 answer, emotion. So emotion. Yeah. yeah. Really, I have feeling the best play in the world. I right. you remember I very new, I change everything and still learning to play snooker and full yeah. size. I never played before. Yeah. I go to Hyderabad just to enjoy. Yeah. I, I, I don't believe nothing, just play. Good. And uh, when I see you play the final, I think I, I don't believe. <laughs> no, it was fantastic. You played and you played. I actually watched it online. I was watching the final against uh, Alfie Burden, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I think he really, oh, today, I, now, I just lost for him because I think he had more experience. And I, yeah, I lost. I, I, I get, I have a lot of chances. Yeah, Alfie's in the frame. Alfie's they they have player. little mistakes because I want to yeah. clear this faster. Maybe <laughs> now more clever, I wait more. Well, I was going to say, I think I think Alfie, Alfie had more experience than you then. Yeah, top player before 32, you know me, more a long time to play on the two also. Yeah. Yes. yeah. For your opinion, best, best player ever? The best snooker player ever, the most talented and the most gifted snooker player ever has to be Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yes, very natural, yeah. He's, he's, he's a special player, he's... He's special. He's very, and by the way, he practices very, very, very hard. I know what I mean. He's when you, speaking, no, it's not practicing. When you hear him, when you hear him say, "Well, I didn't really practice much for the last two months." Yeah, yeah. Eight hours every day. I know eight hours every day, but yes. he speak every time. I don't touch my cue two months. I know I don't like to practice. I but know I he play. Say, I would say, Igor. The player with the best, the best, the player with the best mentality and the best temperament is Stephen Hendry. Yeah, but I, I, my first hero, Stephen Hendry, after yeah. I like a lot of uh, Ronnie. But yeah. for me, Hendry is soldier, kill everyone before. Yes. You know, understand? He was, he was what we call in English relentless. He was, um, he was a he was a winner. He had to yeah. win. Winner, just and he never believed in run rap. Just win and smash everyone. Yeah. I never see this. I I have light my eyes. I see. Yeah. I wanna this. My I wanna follow this guy. And, and I mean? it, exactly. And and also, when the pressure came on, when there was a lot of pressure, he seemed to play his best snooker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, and I, I, I actually coached. I coached Stephen for five years, two thousand seven to two thousand and twelve, and we have a little joke because I played Stephen Hendry in the under twenty one British semi final. Yeah, yeah. and you beat him. When I see Stephen, I say one nil, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you beat. But you can, yeah. you can Maybe. never. You could never fix it. <laughs> yeah, every maybe everyone don't know, but uh, Chris plays Nuka before and the beat Henry. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I you see, so. I have a meeting with uh, Kari, and <laughs> uh, ten years ago him uh, living in Gloucester with me. I speak it now. You top sixteen, but before you money match with me, I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> By the yeah, way, good time, good time. You, you mentioned one of your coaches before, a name you mentioned Zico. Zico, yeah, Zico. That, that name reminds me of one of my favorite football players ever, the Brazilian yeah. player in the 70s, it, 80s, Zico. 80s. Yeah, fla but this player from Flamengo, yeah. Oh. And Zico nickname, but he like Vasco. There's oh. a big difference. I don't know why. Really? I understand. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> uh <laughs> What are biggest pains, pains of a snooker professional player? 
The biggest what, Igor? Uh, biggest pains. Pains. Uh, How do you spell uh, that? Biggest pains. Uh, the big problems. For oh, the biggest uh, pains. The biggest... Okay, yeah. Um, well, the first one is... There's, there's two real keys to develop to be a great snooker player. Okay? And that is... The first one is... Can a player strike the cue ball exactly where intended, where they want to? Cue action. Technique, working together with your visual cortex. Because, Igor, you don't see with your eyes. Okay? Yeah, you, no. see, you see with your brain. And through repetition, some players, they start to aim to miss. And they don't realize. Yeah, good point because now I remember for for beginners and amateurs understand. Remember, I miss blue every time left, left. Yeah. yeah. I, you tell me I don't know why I miss every time left. You tell me now make your enemy right. I put middle, 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 middle. After yeah. I miss right. Yes, exactly. You tell me now your cortex run uh, learning the. Correct. Yeah. So what Correct that is, point. what that is, Igor, is your technique mechanics, your mechanics and technique. Yeah. They need to be coordinated, perfectly coordinated with how you see. And that is the biggest problem for snooker players. Striking the cue ball where intended and aiming the cue ball when the cue hits the ball, aiming exactly where intended. Yeah, this is speaking the final because big question. I I I I waited this gift for a final because I think every player sometimes don't know using side spin, think the center, but using at side spin. Yes, I think why I don't use them, but using is a they big think, key. They think they're hitting the middle. Spot. I mean, most shots, Igor, have an angle. Yeah, ninety okay. percent, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, probably 90-something percent are angle shots. Yeah. When a player plays an angle shot, I'd say 99% of all the players use a little bit of side spin. Yes, no, no, not too much problem. On angle, because they, they want the side spin, so they aim for the side spin. Yeah. But then, when they have a long straight shot, now they need to hit the middle. Yeah, and still use them. <laughs> and sometimes by habit they're still using side spin but they don't know about that they don't, they, they're not aware of it yeah yeah, I know and so, also another problem is angle shots uh, when you use a lot side spin you have deflections uh, a lot a lot information <laughs> better yeah. is look at play the low <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah what do you think about Titania Farrell I think a titanium ferro is very good, and there's a few reasons why. It's very, very strong. So I think for most people that just play snooker generally in the club and they're bashing and they're throwing the cue and they're sanding with sandpaper Paper every time and they're changing their trips all the time with a clean. Yeah. Yeah. They never stop playing with them. So a brass ferro, a normal ferro, very quickly goes too small. Yeah, it's thin. You need so change titanium, again. titanium is very strong. It'll last longer. And it's also, it's got. I think it has a smaller, what's called mass, which means it will actually help the ball travel a little bit straighter with side spin. Yeah, and more, more light also. And a little bit working, lighter. Work, working more together. Yeah. You, the wood. And after I talk, I talk a few, and I, I, I use them, Mike Dunk you. After I talk with you, you tell me. I told you. What do you think about the Tino Faro? It's very good. Okay, I, think, I change it uh, yet. Yeah. <laughs> so they are very really good. More reaction, less yeah. deflection. Very, very good. Yeah, very, I very good. I just very wanna, good. And it's yeah. not it's not expensive either. It's not too expensive. And you, maybe you use a normal Faro for two years. This you use in five, six years. Easy. Exactly. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. I like um, it. What are 
the basic snooker player have to concentrate in the beginning. Okay, in the beginning, that's when it's actually quite good to have a good coach. Because if you have a good coach in the very beginning and he knows what he's doing, he will stop you from developing bad habits in the beginning. Yeah, okay. and you, you continue the, uh, the, the correct way, yeah. From the start. So right from the very beginning, you're developing good habits. Yeah. And I always, I always keep coming back to that word, Igor, habit. The habit is what controls everything. This is a very good point for Americas and especially in Brazil, Brazilian players. Yes. Because someone thinks it's not very important to start together one good coaching. It's, it's, it's ah, a good idea. I learn alone, I look in video, easy, but mm. someone don't know real problem. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Tiger Woods, and I, I, I've, I've met Tiger Woods personally two or three times now. Yeah. Tiger Woods is the best golf player in the world, in my opinion. Me too. <laughs> He's amazing, but he has a full-time coach because he knows it's very easy to start making faults, and doing things a little bit wrong, and before very before too long, it becomes a habit, and now he's doing it wrong by habit. Because maybe too higher, relax, make ad 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 addictions, yeah? Yeah, different position with his hands, swing changes a little bit. And if he has a good coach, the good coach will keep him on track all the time. He goes off track, he brings him back on track. He goes off track, the coach brings Come him back, back yes. on track. And he's keeping him on track all the time. Because it's very easy to start doing things slightly wrong and we're not aware that we're doing it wrong. So that's where a coach can be very important. But I would say to your first, for the question, develop a very good technique in the beginning and learn... To strike the cue ball where intended. That's the first goal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the for these fantastic players, Ron, you say, you said yeah, you tell me and Tiger Woods now. I think the I think these these guys are so fantastic players. Yeah. And different different level. I think yeah. the, the the big key for these players, I think psychology, yeah. I think so because they have the what we call they have the competence they can do it incredible yeah but I mean if you look at Tiger Woods back in 2017 16 15 14 13 I mean we know he had some back problems but the biggest difference was he wasn't very strong emotionally in those years yeah but now he's back yeah yeah I yeah, know I <laughs> follow strong. I like, I like I like him or Federer also unbelievable. Yeah. And, and the other thing, Marigo, when you think about it, people talk about this. Is he getting too old? Well, there was a guy a few years ago played the biggest golf tournament in the world called the Open Championships. Yeah, called Tom Watson, and he he almost won that tournament. He was one shot behind at the end, and he was fifty nine years old. Wow. Right? So, in snooker, there's no reason why players can't play at the top level, even into their 50s. Yeah. Well, this is a, a Federer speak, yeah? The ages is a number. Only a number. Yeah. yeah. I think I think in physical sports, I mean, tennis is really physical. Yeah, I know. I know. I know the history. Good point you speak now. I think everyone know this. Why Stephen Hendry stopped too early? Yes. I speak this with you before. I think yes. the maybe emotional problems. Well, because you remember you tell me he makes centuries every time, but on the mat, no working. Okay. So what happened basically? I started to coach Stephen in 2007. And we started to work on some psychology things. But He had a technical problem as well. He was putting side spin on the cue ball and he, he wasn't really aware of that. Yeah. 
We had to fix that as well. But don't forget, Stephen was married and he had children and he had other responsibilities. Yeah. And when that starts to happen in your life, the balance starts to change. Mm -hmm. When he was young, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, yes, it, was snooker. 100, it was 100 percent snooker. Yeah, I know. And we know in repetition, neuroscience, it's all about repeating, repeating, practice, practice. All time, yeah. So I think he got very frustrated because he wasn't playing like he used to play. And of course, he wasn't winning tournaments anymore. And that's what he really enjoyed most, winning. I know. I know. So when he couldn't win, he didn't enjoy it. And then he thought, what's the point? I'm not really enjoying this. I'm going to quit. But he's, he says he wasn't playing very well at the time. But, I mean, he played Stuart Bingham in 2012 in the, in the world. Yeah. He made a maximum 147 break. Yeah. He then played John Higgins and won 13-3 in the quarterfinals. So he was playing still high-level snooker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think if you if you were to speak to Stephen now and ask him, do you think you retired too early? I think now he would say yes, it was too early. Because he could have still had a very good career. Yeah. He could have probably stayed in the top 16 for a few more years. Yeah, of course, because you see now uh, top eight in the world, top eight, I think 50% plus 40 years old. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? I, I, maybe in the future, maybe five years more or, or something like that, maybe judge still more domination because many retired. You know yeah, what well, I mean? well, you, you're saying that, but if these guys look after themselves, if they can keep themselves physically fit, there's no reason why they can't play for another 10 years. Yeah, yeah. This is a big, big uh, point also you speak. When you have energy to practice and you still play, you you still have good results. But these guys have family, maybe long exactly. time career, yeah. need to change life or lazy or something like that. There's different yeah. results and they have frustrations. Yeah. Yeah, and we have a, we have a saying in England, Igor. You get out of something what you put into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, I know. I mean, so uh, the another point everyone speak about this. How important the Q chip? Because everyone, how uh, how uh, what chip you using? What chip run you using? Or this or this? What important? I think what's important is the tip affects the cue ball in the way that you expect it to do. I think the feeling only, yeah? Yeah, I think I think Igor Figueredo could put 10 different tips on his cue and make a century break. Yeah, just better feeling. I like these or yeah. these or these in use them. I just think it's become very commercial. I think there's lots of companies appeared from I don't know where. And now you can buy 50 different kinds of tips. So I think there's a lot of money involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But also more technology, also improvement about tips. Yeah, I, you, have I know. Layered, you, know, you have layered tip. You've got yeah, layer, layer, layer. layer, you know, for, for some ones, layer is better because you have more yeah. side spin, more reaction. But for yeah. professional, more side spins is dangerous. Well, because the cloth, the cloths are so reactive. So, yeah, so fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the last point now in the more important is that I saved for this. Okay. The balls, this fantastic, fantastic. You give me, I still use it. I play judge. I'm still practice. And uh, two times I play judge. Really uh, show me when I use a side spin, show me the, the, the correct Amy. But yeah. I want you speak about this, the balls. Okay. Why is very, very good and important for this new generation. You're talking about these, yes? The balls. Yes. Chris Henry Sports. Fantastic. Well, the reason why I came up with this, Igor, is in any sport, what you're looking for is what we call feedback. When you do something, 
you want to understand exactly what happened. So these balls are only weight, they weigh around about 17, 16 grams. Okay, there's just two of them, a white and a red. Yeah. What these are going to do with any level of player from amateur, beginner, medium, professional, we now have about 70 of the top world professional snooker players now practicing every day with these balls. Because what they do, they do the two major things, Igor. They help the player to learn how to strike the cue ball where intended. Yeah. If you want to play with middle or side spin, you can really learn how to do that. And it also teaches your brain how to aim correctly. Okay, and that is the reason why I invented these balls to help players first of all learn how to do the two things very well and then make them habits. With repetition, you start to do it the right way without thinking about it. Yeah, this similar use the side spin for using the flexion for port. This you're learning one ball. For the cue ball, well, for learning, for you speak better, I think better. No problem. The, the, the cue ball here basically is teaching you if, if you want to hit the middle of the ball, it, it teaches you how to do that. Okay. When, when, once you can actually learn how to hit the middle, you then become what we call balanced. So now, when you want to play a shot with a little bit of left hand side, you'll get left hand side. And when you want to play a shot with a bit of right hand side, you'll get right hand side because now your brain knows where the middle is. Yeah, a lot of reaction because light. Yeah, so it's teaching you how to technically and visually strike the cue ball where you want to. And in snooker, that's the number one skill you need to develop. Yeah, and another one you learn also about the aim here. Yeah? Because someone's using well, the, red ball, the red ball is very light. So if you try to pop the, the light, the, the ball's red ball into a pocket, if you don't hit the middle, it will not go in the pocket. Yeah, someone's using the flex or something like that. This you, you learn these two points, the side spin and the correct aim line. Yeah, your, your, yes, your aiming fantastic. and your striking. Yeah. I think this this technology you you give this is a big gift for everyone. I think Thank it's you. very good for younger new generation start Absolutely. to play. If you start to learn to play snooker, and also just so you know, in July we're launching the American pool ball size. Really? Yes. Wow, very good. It's a, it's a fantastic way to learn to play snooker or pool because. In the very beginning, you're going to develop really sound habits of striking and aiming. Yeah, I hope you also every school or academies put this for, or Woods Nuka also put this for, for teaching young players. Well, it, it's, it's interesting because all the world snooker coaches now are using the balls. They're using this product. Yeah, I know, I know. Because they see the benefit, because it helps them to coach. It actually makes coaching easier because the coach can see the problem straight away, immediately. Yeah, very easy. Very easy. It makes, just makes it easier. I I using secret also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't give it. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure to see you again, meet you a few, and give this very good meeting in the information for Americas or and the world also to improve yeah. I hope so I hope so to, to see you soon thank you Eagle, so much it was my pleasure and I look forward to seeing you soon well thank you very much yeah and have take, a nice day bye bye take care bye. all the best thank you oh bye bye take care bye bye Eagle.